Over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of talk about the systemic racism in our country and the many problems encountered by people of color. We've had conversations here in the Abbey as well. And one day in a conversation over lunch, um, I said it was hard for me to imagine what it would be like to be profiled and discriminated against just because of the color of my skin. And one of the other monastics at the table reminded me that as women, we have similar experiences. Even as little kids, our parents talk to us about how we have to be careful where we go, what we wear, how we act, how we talk, and so on. Otherwise, we could get into big trouble. And we, too, face discrimination, sometimes unfair treatment, and stereotypes just because of our gender. So it's not to the same extent or in the same ways as people of color. Nevertheless, it does exist in this country and probably in most countries around the world. And sadly, it also exists in Buddhism. So we came across an example of this recently in one of the classes here at the Abbey. There was a sentence in a book we are reading that said, women tend to be more emotional than men. And this was given as the reasons the reason why bhikshunis, fully ordained nuns, have more precepts than bhikshus, fully ordained monks. So it wasn't the first time I heard or read a statement like this in Buddhist teachings. It's actually quite common. But is it true? The Buddha always told us we shouldn't just blindly believe things that we read or hear, but to investigate them, to see if they're true or not. He said this even about his own words. So I thought to do a little investigation. And when I started thinking about it, I immediately came up with some questions like, what does it mean to be emotional? Does it mean just having emotions? So is it the case that women have more emotions than men do? Or does it mean expressing emotions? Do women express emotions more than men do? And could it be a matter of how emotions are expressed, such that men and women have different ways of expressing their emotions? And what kind of emotions are meant in this kind of statement? Because there's dozens of different kinds of emotions. And they're often categorized as good or bad, positive or negative, according to different criteria. So is it that women have or express every kind of emotion more than men do? or only certain ones? And is it right to make such generalizations, to say all women are like this and all men are like that? So I wondered if there were um, studies, scientific or psychological studies or research into these questions. So I Googled and I found, yes, lots of studies. <laughs> and I didn't have time to read all of them. Um, but I found an article on Wikipedia that summarized some of the studies, so I'll just share a little bit of them. And the title of the article is Gender and Emotional Expression. So one sentence says, men and women from various cultures have been shown to accept the Western stereotype that women are more emotional than men. I don't think it's just a Western stereotype, because <laughs> we find it in Buddhism, so it's a, probably a universal. So it shows it's a, it's a very common view, idea, that women are more emotional than men. And then it says, research has shown that culture and context-specific gender roles have a stronger influence on emotional expression than do biological factors. So a quotation from one study says, empirical evidence suggests that girls are socialized to be emotional, non-aggressive, nurturing, and obedient, whereas boys are socialized to be unemotional, aggressive, achievement-oriented, and self-reliant. Peers continue this process as children develop and mature, in effect constraining how, where, why, and with whom certain emotions are expressed. 
So from this, it sounds like any differences in emotional expression between men and women are not so much due to what kind of body we have, whether we have a male body or a female body, but rather how we are conditioned. And of course, that starts very early with our parents and other adults in our world. And then as we start playing with other kids, start going to school, so our peers, our teachers, and so on, and then, of course, our culture, media, and so on. So this resume resonates very much with my own experience. I grew up in a family with three boys and two girls, and I feel there were definite messages about how boys should be and shouldn't be, how girls should be and shouldn't be. So this was in our family, and then also the media, and then it continued at school and church and so on. <clears throat> and another like subheading in this article said nature versus nurture. And it mentions a social developmental hypothesis which points to the fact that infants are not born with the same differences in emotional expression and gender differences generally grow more pronounced as children age. <clears throat> and it mentions a study that was done, a meta-analysis, which I guess means it went over many years. Researchers, hmm? Oh, okay. Anyway, it did go over many years, because it says researchers reviewed gender differences in emotion expression from the infancy period through adolescence in order to determine the impact of development and age on gender differences. Their findings support the notion that social factors in a child's development play a large role in the gender differences that later emerge as Gender differences were not found in infancy, but they emerged <clears throat> by the toddler preschool period and in childhood. So I guess as babies, you know, boy babies, girl boy babies, you know, pretty much show the same emotions. <clears throat> but then when they start to be toddlers and in preschool and so on, then they start showing differences. So that does point to the influence of our adults and so on and our emotions. The article also mentioned the role of biological factors, that this could be uh, one, one influence. And it referred to a study done in 2008 that used MRIs to monitor brain activity in participants. The researchers found that men and women differ in neural responses when experiencing negative emotions, although it didn't really clearly explain what those differences were that said that the way that male and female brains respond to emotions likely impacts the expression of those emotions. But I could help but wonder, they were probably doing these experiments with adults, men and women, who had already had decades of influence from family, society, and so forth. Um, and so it, it seems like they should instead compare the brains of people both when they're infants, <laughs> if they can do that, and then when they are adults later, you know, given that, because I think that, you know, the way we are um, influenced by our society and parents and so on would affect the way we express our emotions, and that in turn would affect the way our brains develop, okay? So we can't just take the brain, the brain activity. And then psychologists. So here's some psychologists, not neuroscientists. <laughs> Many psychologists reject the notion that men actually experience emotions less frequently than do women. Instead, researchers have suggested that men exhibit restrictive emotionality. So that means a tendency to inhibit the expression of certain emotions and an unwillingness to self-disclose intimate feelings. Does that sound familiar? So that's just a few things from this article. And in reading the article, it seems to me that we can't conclude that women have more emotions than men do. And I feel that that is in accordance with Buddhism, because Buddhism says, you know, as long as we're in samsara, we're not enlightened beings, and we haven't even realized emptiness, 
which is the antidote to our afflictive emotions, then we still have all those afflictive emotions, at least in seed form. And then when causes and conditions come together, those emotions can spring up, and whether we are male or female. So we all have the potential to experience anger, fear, jealousy, arrogance, lust, and so on. And there's so many different factors that would influence how we experience them and how we express them, such as our family, our cultural conditioning, but also whether or not we have learned and practiced methods for managing afflictive emotions like anger. You know? So if you've learned those methods and you've worked on it, then even if anger comes up, you're not likely to express it. And also methods for uh, increasing uh, the positive emotions like compassion. So again, compassion training, uh, you know, the evidence is that that does increase compassion. And then, of course, karma. So each person is individual. They have their own karma that they bring with them into their past lives. But of course, researchers don't usually consider karma and past lives and so on. So anyway, my feeling is that it isn't right to make generalizations, to say all men are like this and all women are like that, but rather to look at individual people. Also, I was thinking, <laughs> if they did a study uh, comparing Italian men and Nordic women, they'd probably find that the men were more emotional <laughs> than the women. <laughs> so I have more ideas and thoughts about this issue, but I'll leave them for another BBC. I don't want to carry on. But I just want to mention one last thing before I close. Um, this, this whole idea of the larger number of, of precepts that we have as bhikshunis compared with, with uh, bhikshus. Sometimes this is seen or spoken about in a negative way, <laughs> almost like it's a punishment for being bad or being uncontrolled, that we have to be more restricted, more tied up, more chained up. And I think that's completely wrong to look at it in that way. Because for one thing, Having more precepts is a good thing. It makes us more mindful, more careful about what we do, what we say, and even what we think, so that we're less likely to do things that are harmful or disturbing to others and create negative karma for ourselves that would cause us to suffer in the future. So it's actually helpful to have more precepts. Also, on top of that, um, it said that keeping precepts is a, one of the best ways to create merit, positive potential, which we need to be able to progress along the path, attain the realizations, and eventually liberation and enlightenment. So again, it's really helpful to have more precepts. That way we can create more merit. So I think having more precepts is good for us, it's good for others, it's good for the world. So I think we should rejoice <laughs> that we have more instead of feeling like we're being punished or being disadvantaged. Okay, so these are just some thoughts that I have. And like I say, I'll share more in a coming BBC. Thank you.